Hi, my name is Barry Foster. And I'm Gary Foster. And welcome to the first episode of Antipodean Journey. This is our first attempt at Football Manager on YouTube. Yes, yes. Football Manager 21 is the pleasure of hosting us um, uh, trials and tribulations of, uh, of a non-league football club. And there'll probably be quite a few trials and tribulations as well. But yes. how long have you been playing Football Manager, Gary? Um, I started playing back in the early 2000s and have had mixed success through the through the leagues. I prefer to be a lower league manager. Um, that doesn't necessarily mean I, I've risen to the great heights of a European Cup final with, with Chelsea um, and a, a premiership win with uh, West Ham. But apart from that, not a great deal to report or boast about. Oh, well, fair enough. I mean, um, I've had mixed success playing the game since 2008, so only 12 years. I've certainly won some uh, titles. I've only won one cup, and that was in, funnily enough, uh, Football Manager 2020 with Dunfermline. Well, up you're, in you're Scotland. bringing good form in. Well, hopefully, <laughs> yes. That was only my only cup win. But um, I have been relegated and sacked as well, I must be honest. It's not. A, I don't find it an easy game to play most of the time. Yeah, I think some of our uh, other YouTube uh, colleagues. I think they uh, they do a lot better than us in. Uh... Indeed, some do, and probably one in particular. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> but anyway, as you can see, we've um, landed the uh, the plum job at Aldershot Town mm. in the National League, with a two year contract, eleven hundred pounds a week. Yes. Yeah, it's a nice little uh, job to, to land, and um, you know, all the shop were the original sort of Phoenix club, weren't they? When they sort of rose from the rose from the ashes. So, I think a a, a town and a, an area like Aldershot, they they deserve success. Well, yes, I think they were in the uh, the league two for maybe five six seasons, I think, in the past, but. Um since then have uh, been um, ensconced in the, the National League. So maybe maybe we can get them back into uh, League Two, which would be um, quite a good thing. And there we have it, media mm. prediction of 17th, 17th in the league, which is not very high. Um, no director of football, but we do have an assistant, right. uh, which will come to a little bit later. Unless they've got, a, I think, a fairly decent stadium. Yes, I think it's been recently renovated uh, as well, um, and I, I think their facilities are, are reasonable for the for the national league. Well, certainly seven thousand three hundred and fifty capacity. That's not a not a not a small sna stadium, and uh, this is the so called best eleven at the moment at um, Aldershot. Mm. There's a familiar name there up front. Yes, number forty four, uh, Mr. McCormick. So we'll be. Um uh, following his uh, progress quite uh, closely after his dalliance in the in the A League, yes, I remember watching him uh, many times for Melbourne City. He wasn't a bad striker. I thought he was a bit slow, not very mobile, but he certainly could hit a ball very sweetly outside the box. In fact, if we look at his stats here, natural fitness of three. Yes, I tell the story <laughs> why he wasn't all that mobile. But um, anyway, uh, they reckon a four-one two. What is that? Uh, four three three. Four wide. three three wide. Hmm. Okay. Well, I've often I have played with that formation in the past, so um, it's yeah. good if you've got wingers. People can play out wide. Yes. Well, if we've got the wide players there to uh, supply uh, Mr. McCormick, I'm uh, I'm sure he could rekindle his uh, his Melbourne victory days. Absolutely. And of course, we've got one lone player from Leighton Orient, a Cedric. I think it's the Ogle. Um, Ogie. Ogie or Ogle? Ogie, is it, until the uh, the end of this season? So um, probably got capacity to bring more players in on loan. Hmm. And so here's, here's the club vision, which is um, a little bit of a surprise. I mean, do not sign players over the age of 30. That's, well, yeah, that's okay. a big drama. No. Wage, bu wage budget, hmm. pretty normal. Uh, Two-year contract Contracts. for players, yes. Hmm. But reach the playoffs. Oh, yeah. That's interesting. That's interesting. Um, obviously, they've got a lot more confidence in the squad than what uh, than what we have at the moment. So. Well, what the media has, they're predicting 17th, the board yeah. expecting playoffs. So somebody is a little bit out with their um, uh, predictions for the team. But anyway, they um, that's what they expect from us and it's required. 
um, FA Cup first round minimum and an FA Trophy fourth round minimum. Well, mm. fair enough. Yeah. And after that, basically work towards gaining promotion to the uh, Skybet League 2 mm. Mm. for at least three seasons and then win promotion to League 2. So um, yeah, well, they're not expecting it straight away. No, but uh, making the, uh, the playoffs this year will certainly be a, be a challenge. So it, it will pay us to have a, uh, a squad makeover, I think, of a very fine-tooth comb. Yes, well, it certainly will be a challenge, uh, a, uh, a playoff uh, position, but um, we'll do our best. I think we'll, um, at the moment we'll do the media, um, unless we want to... Uh, change that down the track but I think we um, we should probably should take a, just a bit of a look at uh, all the shot as a club um, just some of the general information it was founded mm. in 1992 and the nickname are the shots yes well they've got a even though they've got a short modern history I mean the, the history of the previous club goes back for for quite a number of years um, fierce rivals with Woking uh, and Reading so there's, they probably won't cross paths for a couple of years uh, yet. Uh, Crawley, Brentford, Stevenage and Wickham are their other rivals. Yes, well, uh, I think Woking are going to be in our league, I think. I think. So maybe, yeah. Oh, uh, yes, yes, they are. They're in the National League. So oh, we will, we oh, will play Woking. I don't know about Reading, as you said, and the others. Yes, mm. Mm, slight chance there. 910 season ticket holders, just short of the 1,000, uh, which I guess is not too bad for this, uh, this level. Um, well, hopefully success will uh, get more bums on seats. Uh, that's right. And uh, with affiliates, we actually do have a senior affiliate in the form of Chelsea. That's interesting. Yes. Paying £55,000 a year, which is a nice little sum. Right. Um... We'll this host a friendly and keep all gate receipts. Chelsea will pay an annual fee and we'll terminate the link once we're in the same division, which is fair enough. So mm. that'll be us going up rather than Chelsea coming down. I, I think so, and that could be quite a few years down the track too. But anyway, it's interesting that they do have this um, senior affiliate because I wasn't expecting one at all um, at uh, Aldershot in the National League. Mm. But let's take a look at the uh, the staff, see what uh, we inherit when it comes to staff. And we do have a um, assistant manager, Anwar Udin, mm. I think he may pronounce his name. And look, that's not too bad, I think, for um, an assistant manager at this level. Uh, no, no, we'll certainly be relying on him and his uh, input because we'll be delegating a number of the responsibilities uh, to him, so... Absolutely. Yeah. Well, man management of 10 is, uh, I think, uh, certainly livable, and his judging ability is not too shabby at this level. So I think he's certainly going to be with us for the year. We've got a, a, a head of youth development. Um, mm. No contract. Good with younger youngsters, but um, judging a little bit on the average side. Yes, working with youngsters and level of discipline, I think, are obviously strong strong suits but um, whether or not we sign him to a contract will um, will be food for thought. I think indeed. Um, we've also got a goalkeeping coach in David Blackmore. No contract. No. Um, I'm not too impressed by those figures. Well yes we might be having a very short sharp chat with <laughs> Mr Blackmore. <laughs> I think we'll be advertising for a new goalkeeping coach. Um, we do have a coach in Danny Whitehome and um, well, look, it's not too bad. Um, I've seen worse. Yes, yes. Um, but he's I, okay. But once again, he's got no contract. So we could go looking for somebody else if we wish. Yeah, I mean, we, we certainly need to do some squad building. And if there's a... That's got to flow through to the staff as well. So we need to we need to improve all the, all the bodies and um, give us the best shot at promotion. And we've got Michael... Kuperwitz, who is a um, performance analyst and um, I think also a, a coach as well in a secondary role. Mm, whose numbers aren't terribly impressive. No, and uh, so he might be uh, on the way out. We've got a physio in Georges Berthenau. I think that's how it's pronounced. That's, mm. not, that's not bad. 
No, 13? no, we're happy to, and on a contract as well. So Absolutely. So we wouldn't... Um, it's a good would, contract as well, mm, to 22. Mm, yeah, so we wouldn't have any problems in keeping, uh, keeping them on. No, and uh, then we got a scout, one scout, Andrew Knight, and a uh, little bit um, shabby. Yeah, numbers are a little bit skinny. Mm, maybe, maybe we can do better there, but he's on a contract for the rest of the season. Under 18's manager in Ross White, and uh, that's not too bad. No, no, happy with uh, happy with those because we'll be relying on the under 18's to um, uh, to bring on some players for the first team. And he doesn't have a contract at the moment, so maybe we could think about offering him a contract mm. uh, to maybe keep him at the club. And last but not least is a Michael Gibson, the under 18's physio, and um, that's not brilliant. No. No, those numbers also are a little bit skinny. So I think, um, uh, but he's under contract. He is. Um, yeah, we'll have a chat about him. I think. We yeah, we might have to. I think, but I think we can do better for the under 18s. And when we look at our staff, um, we've got some vacancies here. We do have a vacancy for a head performance analyst. Mm. Uh, but probably more important, we have a director of football mm. we can go after. I think that's probably important, certainly a chief scout and another scout. Yes. Um, we can also look for a head physio, head of sports science and a, a sports scientist. Well, certainly the head physio, I think we would be um, wanting to fill uh, in a hurry, maybe the last two we can um, think about. Mm. Um, yeah, especially along uh, with the director of football and a mm. chief scout, I think they would be the, our priority appointments first up. Absolutely. So um, so let's take a look at the, the squad we've inherited. Yes, and, and as you can see, uh, the squad that we've got is actually relatively young, uh, which all goes well for the future. And you can see by the number of positions that each player can cover, it's quite a versatile squad. So I think that will be the uh, be certainly one of the strengths. But um, if we can just go to our goalkeeping personnel that we've got in the first team. So we've got Walker and Hall. Walker is currently three-star ability, potential three-star ability. So he's probably playing near to his best. But uh, Hall, uh, one and a half star, but four and a half star potential, so he's certainly going to be one for the future. Okay, well, let's take a look at um, defenders. What have we got there? Well, defenders, we seem to be pretty well stocked uh, with defensive capabilities. Unfortunately, though, Lewis Kinsella, who seems to be our our number one defender, is out, uh, out injured with torn needle ligaments for eight to nine months. So... It looks as though he'll be missing uh, pretty much uh, the majority of the, the season, so we certainly won't be banking on him this year. No, a bit of a shame because he looks as though he was uh, quite a decent player. Mm. But the rest of the defenders, uh, Fowler, Finney, Sandals White, um, they seem to be covering positions well. We've got wide defensive players in Colombi and uh, Whittingham, and we've got... Uh, Shadrach Ogi uh, on loan from Reading, I believe. Uh, I think it was Leighton Orient. Leighton Orient. Leighton Orient. Yes. My apologies. So um, yeah, they'll probably uh, he'll probably uh, feature in in, uh, in some part of the play this year. And we've got a number of young defenders who have been listed for loan, so we'll be keen to uh, to get them out and loan because they've got. Certainly, uh, three, four, and four and a half star potential. Okay, well, let's go to um, <coughs> defensive midfielders. Defenders, our central defensive midfielders. Okay, so, we'll just click on that. There we go. Yeah, so if we're going to be playing with a 4 3 3 wide, uh, these will be the, the people we'll be looking at. And James uh, Rowe, he comes up as probably the, the best equipped player but he can cover a number of positions as well. So whether he's a defensive midfielder or central midfielder, that'll uh, he may swap between the two. Very impressive looking player there. I like those attributes. Yes. Right yes. across the board. Yes, the other players there, Wiley, Whittingham, Lyons Foster. Um, yeah, versatile, versatile players and will certainly feature uh, in the team. Jay Barton uh, listed for loan, but certainly shows potential for the future. 
Okay, well let's uh, let's look at midfielders. Uh, yeah. We're going for all sides, I think. Yeah. Um, Josh Rees appears here, uh, along with Craig Tanner and Ross McCormick, who's a, a name from the past that um, we know too well from the uh, from the A League. Uh, will be. Uh, keeping a close eye on these because once again they they cover a number of positions not only wide but central positions uh, as well as some of them actually cover strikers so versatility and uh, and uh, firepower is is going to be one of our strengths and certainly I think playing wide <laughs> yes yes lots of wide midfielders so we've got attacking midfielders uh, once again we're blessed with uh, strong attacking force and most of these players uh, have actually featured in the previous screen mm, so mm. mixing and matching um, injuries will play a, a part throughout the season so I guess um, versatility will be our will be our strength so I think we're well covered and we've got a number of youngsters listed for, for loan that show tremendous potential down the bottom so it all goes well okay and finally the uh, the business end of the uh the team. Yeah, the pointy end. So uh, Tanner and McCormick, they, they're featuring again uh, at the top of the list. Uh, Newball and uh, Paniotu, they they also feature. But interestingly enough, we've got Mike Fondrup down the, down the bottom, who's uh, he's our lone striker so uh, to play as a target man. So I think he will... Uh, because of his specialty as a striker, I think he he will probably feature more often than not in the in the squad. Well, at one ninety one centimeters tall, that's a bit of tall timber. Yeah, um, a lot of body for our wide men to aim for. Absolutely, heading uh, of twelve and jumping of fourteen. I guess that's not too bad. And um, Tanner was another. Well, he's much shorter player at uh, one seventy two. Um, but very versatile. Yeah, current ability very good. Um, and Ross McCormack. Yes, uh, from the A League days. Mm. So, wide on the left, uh, I think he Melbourne Victory played him as a striker. Melbourne City. Uh, Melbourne City. Melbourne City. Yes. Played him as a striker. But, they did. Um, and he was quite successful in that role. Well, he was. He if one have a very quick look. Um, I don't yeah, know. Funny yes. was and there were Melbourne City, 17 uh, appearances with 14 goals, 14 which is goals. not too bad. Mm. And then five with uh, the Mariners and only one goal. Yes, yes, that was a, a less successful stint. I think he got didn't... injured or something like that. But anyway, um, he didn't. He didn't do too badly down in uh, in Melbourne. But um, there was one other player I just wanted to take a look here. Yes, now Nubel, another. Very tall mm. forward at the 191 centimetres tall. Yeah, so he's going to be good for set pieces and corners. So hopefully he can uh, he can do the job, although his preferred position is a wide target man. Mm. I've never heard of a wide target man. Yeah. Have you ever heard, heard of that um, no, terminology? Or? No, oh. I'm, uh, I'm not sure... I'm not sure whether that's going to suit our style of play, but certainly as an inverted winger or an inside forward, we'll... Uh, uh, we can get him running up and down that left flank. Okay, well that's basically the uh, the Aldershot team. Um, I think we've certainly got some um, decent players to work with. Mm. Um, and so uh, hopefully we can also add some quality to the team before um, the season gets underway. Yes, well as I said, versatility is probably one of the uh, strengths of the team. Uh, but we should be trying to, to strengthen across all the areas and We'll uh, be relying on our recruiting staff to uh, to find some bodies for us. Absolutely. This team squad. If we take a very just quick look at the uh, under 18s, um, if you look at the potential here, uh, Lewis Horn Haynes um, is probably one of the best once again playing out wide. Mm -hmm. But he's uh, he's only 17. Um, Lots of potential there in those. Uh, yeah, Harvey Keogh, only 16. And keeper. So a fairly, fairly young fellow. And maybe uh, Joseph Rabbits, only 18. Yeah, yeah wide, uh, 
wide on the left so quite quite versatile by the look of it yes and uh, so I think we've got certainly something to work there and I think we will be coming up with uh, a wide formation to use all those players mm. out wide um, probably one thing we probably should have a quick look at transfer budget we've got 17,000 mm. already and we do have um, some money uh, in the kitty with the wage budget yeah, room to move there, of, uh, just over about 3,700. Yes, so at least that's something to play around with. And we do have some games already organised, one in a couple of days' time against our under-18 squad, mm. and then a whole list of friendlies, a bit of a long pre-season. Yeah, we'll be looking to uh, probably appoint our staff quite quickly and then... Um, and hit the ground running in that um, certainly that second bunch of friendlies. I mean, we're we're going to be in the dark a little bit against our number two team, but uh, after that, I think we should be um, be moulding our team and formation and tactics together quite nicely. Yes, well, certainly the last uh, three games there, Walsall, Kidderminster, and Port Vale. I think they'll be good tests for the side because in the opening round we're um, home to Wrexham. Yes, and yeah. uh, I think I think they may be. Um, are they one of the favourites? Oh, no, predicted to come twelfth. Mm. So that's a bit uh, that's a bit of a surprise. But um, just take a quick look at the Vanarama. If you look at the preview, Notts County are the favourites at mm. five to six. Yeah. With Sullyhull, Yeovil, and Stockport. So we're at fourteen to one in eleventh spot. Yeah, it's interesting how the different perceptions sort of vary. Mm. So the media's got us to come. 17th I think we're our squad suggests that we're going to do a lot better than uh, than that um, but there we're uh, 14 to 1 to uh, to go up so interesting times ahead yeah well it's certainly going to be a challenge that's no doubt uh, no doubt about that so I think we've got some work to do to um, play all these friendlies and sort the team out and also some of the staff mm. so we'll probably be back on uh, I'd say uh, Wednesday with the opening two games of the uh, of the season. Hmm. Uh, so until then, I hope you've enjoyed the video. If you have, please give us a thumbs up. If you haven't, well, you can do the Nero. But until next time, it's goodbye from me. And it's goodbye from him. Goodbye. Goodbye.